Okay, so we would like to look at the debit and credit type of things, how to do journal entries, how to post it to general ledger, and then prepare a trial balance. Why we want to pre prepare a trial balance? Because we want to see in a, in a one page report, we want to see what accounts we have, how much balances we have in every single account. And if the debit side of the trial balance and credit side of the trial balance is equal or not. So let's go with the first page. So in here, um, here we go. So this is a T account. You see the T account that I draw on paper whenever I show you something, that T account is very, very basic. But this T account looks much more useful because it has a specific location for dates. It has a specific location for description of the transaction. It has the debit side. It has the credit side and it has the balance showing at any given time. Make sense? So here is debit side. This is the credit side. And this is the balance at any given time. So if there is a specific opening balance on this account, that's $50,000 showing as a opening balance. And then every single transaction after submitting to the T account, it will pop up in the right box in this cell. And then that will be added to 50 and then it will become $60,000. And then another 5,000 will be debited, will be added to 60 and it will pop up to 65. So this is a very good smart T account. So you just make a formula on this box. You say equals to, sorry, this one. You say equals to, then click on beginning balance plus that cell minus that cell, enter. And then you grab the fill handle and pull it all the way down in the Excel document. And every single, uh, every single time you do a debit or credit, your balance automatically will be calculated on the balance section. Make sense? or you want me to show you on the Excel? Okay. Okay, so debit and credit doesn't mean anything, okay? It's just a name. So don't say, oh, I have debit card, I know what debit is, or I have credit card, I, have, I know what credit is. No, in this case, when we use debit card and credit card, is technically uh, nothing, it's just, just a name. So how do you learn uh, uh, then what to do, which one, when you do debit, is the account gonna increase or decrease? That's, that comes with practice. And uh, by end of this figure, you should be completely okay with that. And I gave you a page that I said, here is the account types in module one, I believe, right? Yes, account types. So make sure you get used to those account types. But in the same time, uh, how do you proceed? I already described that in my first video uh, in the uh, accounting cycle video, uh, which I was talking about. Uh, if I, I was asking, if I give you 10 bucks, where do you put it? The obvious question is put it in my pocket because it's close to me and it's safe. So using that, uh, that uh, way of thinking, which is common sense, you, I always told you, if you get any asset, put it in debit because debit is always close to where you start doing your journal entry. And the credit automatically ends up to be credit without uh, uh, you, know, you do anything because as long as you know what debit is, the credit is the other thing. The other thing is just a name that you need to record. So depends what the journal entry is and what transaction you want to record. For now, you learn just this. Anytime you get an asset, put it in debit, put it in your pocket, put it close to you. If the asset goes away, 
far away out of your pocket, then it's credit. But every time you get an asset, it goes in the debit close to you. As long as you get to this part and you learn this part, then slowly by end of this week, you will learn the rest of the uh, uh, normal balances. So what is the normal balance for, let's say for asset? Uh, asset, if you debit it, it will increase. So normal balance for any asset is debit. Expense, normal balance is uh, uh, debit. If you debit expense, expense will increase. Uh, liability, normal balance is credit. That means if you credit liability, the liability will increase. Uh, common stock, normal balance is credit. That means if you credit common stock, the common stock will increase. So that's the idea. Uh, so for some uh, uh, classification, by doing debit, it will increase, which we call it normal balance. So that's the idea. And here is the book is trying to explain it a little bit, uh, which uh, might be a little bit uh, confusing at the beginning, but just stick to the story that I, I gave you. And uh, that will hopefully uh, make it easy for uh, now. And here is again, explaining this uh, debt, uh, D-E-A-D, debit increases, uh, debit uh, increases uh, uh, expenses, uh, assets, dividend. Uh, so that's how your book is trying to give you an idea. But honestly, you see whatever is in here, I'm very good at, very bad actually, very weak in memorizing things. So uh, like I can read this, but honestly in, in a matter of 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you ask me this, I will forget. So how do I not forget things? In order to remember things, for me at least, I need to make it common sense. Anything that goes to common sense, uh, it's easier for me to learn. And then because I'm practicing it constantly, it gets to the point that it becomes a natural uh, instinct. Okay, so here is explaining what goes up if you debit, what goes down if you uh, credit. So if you have asset, if you debit, it will be uh, increasing. So normal balance for asset is debit. Normal balance for expense is debit. Normal balance for dividend is debit. Okay, how about liabilities? Normal balance, because it's increasing here, you see? Normal balance for liabilities, credit. Revenue normal balance, credit. Equity normal balance, credit. That's all you need to learn. Okay. Every time you want to record something, you need the source document and you need to file it properly. So keep the source document. So the source document tells you what type of transactions you need to do. So always you have to look at the source document and then analyze it and then uh, do the journal entry and record it. Sometimes a source document might not be necessary to record anything. Let's say a purchase order. Purchase order, there is nothing to record. It's just a order to, you know, purchase something in future. There is no, uh, there is no commitment. There is no uh, uh, MOU or anything on this. It's just a purchase order or sales order. Those two, there is not even it's a document maybe, but there is nothing to record. But most source documents, after analyzing, you will realize that needs to be. Uh, journalized and recorded in the business transaction. Okay, so this is the cash T account. Uh, normally it has to have also a, a account number, which I like to talk about that account number maybe very soon at the end of this chapter. Remind me if I forget. Um, okay, let's keep going. So here it says uh, how you do journal entry. It's a chrono chronological listing of transactions and events of an organization in a debit credit format. And then you click save. 
So you might say, uh, how does that happen? So uh, you can uh, journalize something by doing a debit credit. For example, if I, um, if I open a micro uh, QuickBooks, To show you <clears throat> how a journal entry happens in the QuickBooks. This is a sample company. Okay. I want that sam sample company to open so I can show you where you journalize in a QuickBooks. So this is a QuickBooks desktop. We have also QuickBooks online. Okay, so this is the, uh, let's say, homepage. This is the homepage. Here we go. That is the homepage. That is the homepage, which normally you, uh, let's say, uh, most of the times you record your transaction using homepage, okay? But I want to show you specifically journal entry. So you go to accounting, accountant center, which is from here, accountant center, and then you go to make a general journal entry, okay, right there. And this is a, how a general journal entry looks like. So you enter a date, like whatever it might be. If there is entry number or any reference number, if it is at the end of the year adjusting entry, you click this box. Remember the prepaid rent that I said you record the rent expense at the end of the month? That's an adjusting entry. You click this box. If it's not an adjusting entry, then uh, you can just uh, unclick it. So here. So now you can go easily here and then you can choose, let's say, checking account and since we are here, let me show you the account numbers also. And as you see here, they have account numbers. Every account has an account number. See? So how do you know checking, now, checking account starts with one? How do you know payroll liability starts with two? So it's easy. There's a, there's a uh, uh, systematic. I, I had it in my video if you watched it already, uh, accounting cycle video. So asset starts with one, always. Uh, in a classroom format, you can say 101. Uh, but in a business format, it's better to use five digits so you have tons of number in between. So here is, let's say, uh, 101, checking number, and starts with one. Then you start two for liabilities. You see accounts payable starts with two liabilities. And then after uh, liabilities, what is it? Remember accounting equation, asset equals liability plus equity, right? So after liabilities are done, equity starts here. Equity starts with three. Capital stock starts with three, okay? Um, dividend starts with three. Uh, retained earning starts with three. Those are all three. Okay. After three is after capital stock and dividend and retained earning, it's uh, part of the equity section is the revenue, right? Revenue will increase the equity. So here is the revenue starts with four. So anything starts with four, it's a revenue. As you see, anything starts with four is a revenue. After revenue, it's number five, which is cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is the cost of the material you just sold. So if you buy a t-shirt for $10 and then you sell it for $25, the $10 is cost of goods sold, $25 is the revenue. 
and 25 minus 10 is 15, which is gross profit. So cost of goods sold is starting with five, okay? After cost of goods sold with five, all other expenses, those are still cost of goods sold, okay? Cost of goods sold, this is the main account, and those are the uh, uh, sub accounts of cost of goods sold. <clears throat> After the cost of goods sold is expenses. All expenses like automobile expense, fuel expense, insurance expense, repair expense, bad debt expense, uh, uh, bank service charge expense, depreciation expense, all those expenses starts with six. As you see, starts with six. You see, all the expenses starts with six. And then at the end, starts with seven, we have other income. Other income starts with, uh, uh, we have two types of income. A regular income that belongs to your revenue uh, business operation starts with four. But other income, like in, let's say interest income, uh, that, that is later on you will learn why we are doing it. We put it in a seven categories. We call it other income. Other expense starts with eight because we want other expense be after other income. And uh, again, you will learn this, why this is, we separate them. What is other expense? Let's say interest expense. That's other expense. Why interest expense is separate compared to the other expenses? Because uh, interest expense has nothing to do directly with your business operation. It's because you borrow money for some reason and you're paying interest, that interest is an interest expense. It's a tax deductible item, but has nothing directly to do with your business day-to-day -day operation. So you want to separate them. And as you see, those are separated, okay? Now, so let's say you want to do a journal entry. You want to, let's say um, you got $100 from a customer. So you put that $100 in the saving account you might want to put it in the saving, uh, uh, checking saving, or let's say petty cash. Petty cash is the small dollar amount that you uh, uh, always keep in your uh, small safe box to pay for the small expenses so you don't write the check all the time. But in this case, we got a check from a customer or cash, doesn't matter. And we take it to the checking account in the bank and we deposit that. So we have a date. We choose the uh, checking account. And remember, if you, if you get cash, where do you put it? Close to you, debit or credit? Debit, right? Debit. If you get debit, right? Yes. Okay, so let's say here is 500 bucks. There you go. So that's a $500. And as soon as I do that, automatically the software source says, perfect. So if this is debit, then something is credit just like that so all i need to learn to do bookkeeping is this if you get any asset from any reason for any reason put it in your pocket close to you debit and if you do that right then credit will be automatically Correct. All you need to do is just click this box and choose why you got $500. And you got $500 because a customer gave you $500 to finish a job in future. So it's not earned yet. So you are looking for liability. Liability starts with two. So here we go. We go to two and is it accounts payable? No. Is it QuickBooks credit card? No. Is it this? No. Uh, due to owner? No. Payroll liability? No. No, no, no. Sales tax payable? No. Loan? No. Mortgage? No. No, no. We don't have it. What do I, what I'm looking for? Do you know what I'm looking for? Anyone knows what I'm looking for? He said unearned. Thank you. So you are listening, unearned revenue. Do you see any unearned revenue in here? Starting from two. Do you see 
deferred revenue or unearned revenue. Or some, sometimes some accountants, they call it prepaid revenue. Do you see anything like that here? I don't. Okay, what do I do then? I don't see it. Huh. Okay, what do I do? I need a T account. On the paper, it's easy because I draw the T account just like that in a matter of seconds. But here you need to add, you click add new. Then is it income? No. Is it expense? No. Is it, uh, is it a, uh, like a fixed asset? No. Is it a bank? No. Is it a loan? No. Is it a credit card? No. Is it equity? No. Gosh, then what is it? Uh, how about that? Is it, yes, this one. Current liability, it's other current liability. Current liability, it's a liability that needs to be paid within a year or less. Do you know what's the difference between accounts payable and like current liability, other current liability? Anyone? Why not, why not say accounts payable? No? Accounts payable, normally you use for something that you have an account. Let's say you have, a, uh, you have vendors, you have an account with vendors and um, they send you supplies and you record accounts payable as a liability and then you pay down the road. Uh, let's say utilities comes in. You might say utility payable or you might say accounts payable. But for utilities, I'm gonna say utility payable. I'm not gonna say, Accounts payable. Accounts payable is when you get something from your vendors. Uh, and then because of that, it becomes accounts payable. So in this case, I'm gonna call it other current liability. There you go. Ah, oh, here, read this. It says uh, retainers from customers. That's exactly what I want because I got $500 from a customer to finish a job in future, like a prepaying taxes or something. So here, this is a retainer from a customer. Perfect, that's all I want. Boom, continue. It says, what's the account name? Oh, account name is, um, let's say, unearned revenue. Is it a sub account of something? No, in this case, no, it's not a sub account of something. Uh, okay, then do I, do I want to put a the, uh, uh, description? Uh, yeah, I can put it if I like. Account number, very important. So where do I put it? Uh, it starts with two definitely. And um, 2000, let's say, uh, I don't know. I, I would have liked to look at the chart of account properly, but it's a little bit um, late for now. So it's okay, 2350. I can change the number if I want to. Uh, <clears throat> oh, no, not that account number, sorry. This is the account number. This is for uh, it, it. He thinks maybe this is a, a liability of, let's say, some type of liability that ha has an account number or something. That's why it gives you like a place to put account number and routing number or something, uh, just like a checkbook, but we don't have that. I, I'm talking about account number for the chart of account. So that's where it goes 2350. And I say, okay, do I have an opening balance on this? No, I don't. So here, save and close. So there you go. So now let's see where this is. So this is right after, uh, so be above due to owner. Very good, I put it in a very good place. You see? So uh, this is uh, accounts payable, QuickBooks credit card payable, uh, oil company credit card payable, and there you go, here, 2350, it's in a perfect place. Very good, happy. Anyway, you're good. So here, I just click save and um, I click save and close, I believe. So I click save and, uh, and it goes away, Dave. Uh,
I just erased it. Did I did something? But if you revert, would it take you back? I just wonder what did I click. What date was that? December, I believe it was December. That's you can search it, professor, by the by the company. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it was saved, uh, but it was December 15, 2022. So it, normally you can go back and forth here uh, just to find it. So uh, I have another one in here for 250, and here is the checking account. So we are good. So now. You see the checking account is debited for $500. The unearned revenue has been credited for $500. I have maybe a reference number for some, whatever reference number it might be. Um, I have a date and I closed. Uh, if you want to do another journal entry, you say save and new. But if you want to just close it, you say save and close and the window will close. And this is how you do the journal entry. Any question on journal entry, and uh, chart of account, account numbers, anything that we so far talked about. Well, okay, so this is how it goes. So let's go back to uh, journal entry example. And this is the example of the book again says, do you need the date? Uh, you debit cash and uh, cash will increase, goes into your pocket. Something has to be credited, obviously. And uh, in, in an accounting classroom, you leave some indent in here, and then you type capital stock in a classroom format. But that is not, uh, that is not true in QuickBooks. You see, in QuickBooks, you don't indent anything. You just say, what is debit, what is credit? But in a classroom format, remember for credit, we just indent something just to show that's a credit, okay? Advertising expense, again, as you see, it's a debited to increase. So cash goes out of your pocket, far away. Something has to be debited and that will be expense. In, an, in, in, in accounting, normally we always do the debit first and credit second. So if you have three debits, do the three debits and then credit. Or you might have one debit and three credits. So, but here is just this very simple uh, format journal entry is not compounded, but if you have compound journal entry, it might be two, three, four, five, 10, 20 lines. So it depends on the situation, but uh, this is a simple journal entry. <clears throat> so here you receive cash and because the job provided services to customers for cash, if you provide services to customers for cash, that's where you record cash and you record service revenue. So if I show you this in the QuickBooks type, so let's say save and close to this and minimize that one, go to homepage. So in a, in a QuickBooks, even you wanna do to, let's say sales receipt, uh, what's the difference between sales receipt and creating an invoice? Anyone knows? Creating an invoice, creating a sales receipt. Okay, in both cases, the job is done. Job is completed. But the point is, are you going to send an invoice and wait for a check? That's what you create, create an invoice. That means you, when you click create an invoice, that means you are debiting accounts receivable, crediting revenue. 
One more time, if I click create invoice and I create an invoice, that means I debit accounts receivable, accounts receivable will increase and credit revenue, that means revenue will increase. Now, if I complete the job and right at the spot, the customer gives me, uh, let's say uh, a check or cash. So that is uh, uh, as, uh, sales receipt. It's not an invoice anymore because the job is done and the cash is received immediately on the spot. So here I, I'm going to create a uh, sales invoice. If I create a sales invoice, what is the journal entry? Anyone knows? No? Anyone wants to try? Okay. So if I create a sales receipt, the journal entry is debit cash because I got cash, right? Put it in your pocket, remember? Debit cash, credit revenue. Debit cash, credit revenue. Here, debit accounts receivable, credit revenue. Debit accounts receivable, credit revenue. Here, debit cash, credit revenue. Now, here if I debit accounts receivable, credit revenue, how about when the cash is received, like two weeks later? Then I go here, I say receive payment. I go receive payment. That means debit cash, credit accounts receivable. Debit cash, credit accounts receivable. So if I want to show you on the paper, so you can have a visual uh, reference, let me just stop sharing for a second. Go to my camera and pin. And here we go. So <clears throat> this is an invoice, okay? Invoice. When do you issue an invoice? When you provide the job and you send an invoice to customer. In that case, accounts receivable is debit for let's say $1,000. And, and this is debit credit, right? I'm not gonna write this debit credit anymore because you need to understand what is debit. Debit is always on the left. Credit is something thousand dollars in this case, and I call that revenue. In that case, this is how it goes. So accounts receivable goes up by thousand dollars, and revenue goes up by thousand dollars. Okay, and then another customer, I issue a sales receipt. Sales receipt means I give. I receive cash, let's say 750 bucks, and I record the revenue and uh, print the sales receipt and give it to customer. So here we go. So cash is debited. Cash is debited, 750, and revenue is credited 750. So as you see, revenue goes up, cash goes up. This customer, after two weeks, Send me a check for $1,000. Here we go. I received the check, put it in my pocket, $1,000 close to me. Something has to be credited, and that is closing accounts receivable. So asset goes up, the other asset goes down. Both of them are asset, but one of them goes up, the other one goes down. So in this case, if I post it to the T account, Cash goes up by $1,000. Accounts receivable goes down by $1,000 and becomes zero. That's the difference of sales receipt compared to issuing an invoice. Questions? <clears throat> Hmm. 
Okay, so let's look at the chat, see if, if I have any questions over there. Okay, so group uh, members, I already chose those group members. You should have been able to see in the people section. I did already assign the groups. You want me to show you? Here. So if you go to people, click on group project, you will see all the groups, okay? Every group, group one, group two, and you can contact your group. So either going here and visit group homepage, or you can go to normally inbox, using inbox, Choose your class, choose your group, select all group members, and send an email to everyone. Okay, any questions so far? Oh, you might have said something on Monday, but for our groups, does Excel have like a, like a sharing thing like Google Docs has or? Like, is there a way for us all to work with the same documents at the same time? For the group project? Right, yeah. Let me see what the group project is. You go to assignment and group PowerPoint presenter. This is your group project. So in, for this one, you need a Google slide. So you have to go to Google, uh, your Google Docs, uh, create a Google slide, share the link with your group members uh, so everyone can work on the project at, uh, remotely and you finish the project. So those are the seven slides, minimum requirement, seven slides. And I told you each slide, what should it be? Here is a sample of PowerPoint. Uh, you cannot use the same ratios that it's in this sample, but use some, another ratio, but you, all you need is just one ratio for each category of profitability, liquidity, and solvency. And that's a sample of group project. And the only thing is not in this sample is at the bottom of each slide, there's a speaker note section, which you need to type exactly what you are going to explain about that slide if it was a live presentation. And here I put a video about how to analyze financial data for PowerPoint presentation. And here I put a link how to contact group members. So everything is almost given to you. So all you need to do is just uh, you know, do it. So publicly traded companies, you can get the information from SEC website, watch this video, or you go to Yahoo Finance and you watch it in the Yahoo Finance here, Yahoo Finance. And go to Yahoo Finance and go choose the company that you like to present like Walmart, for example, and there you go. That shows the, uh, in the in the history of the Walmart, make sure you put that Walmart has a dividend yield of 1.71%. That means you can earn that much uh, for your investment in the stock on an annual basis. And when you wanna look at the, uh, let's say uh, the, uh, uh, financials, click on financials here for Walmart. And the first thing comes up is the income statement. And that's the income statement, the latest one, annual report. So you have to go with the latest numbers. And here is the total revenue. And that's cost of goods sold. So total revenue, cost of goods sold. Revenue minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. So for here is 572 minus 429 cost of goods sold, the gross profit is 143. 
And this is what you also put in the PowerPoint slide on one quarter to show all numbers in thousands. So when you copy this, let's say you put this number somewhere, uh, everyone can understand that there is three other zeros after that. Those are the operating expenses. We have two types of operating exp expense, general and administrative expense, selling expense and general administrative expense. Uh, that is total 170. And then that gives you operating income. So as you see, the income statement is here. If you like the balance sheet, click on the balance sheet and it will change to the balance sheet. And again, you choose the latest balance sheet available for the annual report. And this is the latest balance sheet. Okay. And in the balance sheet, it says total asset equals liability plus equity. But if you want to know what is in the asset, you click here and you see the current asset and non-current assets. For liabilities, you click here and you see current liabilities and non-current liabilities. For equity, again, you can click and see the details on the equity. Cool? What is a non-current? Now, current asset is an asset that can be converted to cash, uh, liquidated in a matter of a year or less. Non-current asset is an asset that uh, it's kind of hard to make it liquid in one year. So anything that cannot be converted and liquidated in one year or less, so-called we call it non-current asset. Good question. In regards to a uh, balance sheet, again, we go to details later on. Okay, so let's keep going. And here is the general ledger. General ledger is bunch of T accounts. Um, so which, which account is first? I told you already, asset starts with one. The cash is 101. Accounts receivable is 110, let's say. And those are the T accounts of in the general ledger. I show you the T account the way I show on the paper, which is very, uh, you know, uh, simple one, but this is a good format of T account. Those are the T accounts that exist in the general ledger for this example in the book. And then, uh, you, when you do the journal entry, you have to post them. Uh, that means you have to send them, post them into the general ledger. So every journal entry, when it's done, you need to post it to the T account. So here, there is a journal entry, as you see. After the journal entry is done, description is here, date is here, debit this, credit that, and then you post this to the proper T account. So this 25,000 debit goes into the cash and this 25,000 credit goes into all the way capital stock. Anyone knows why capital stock is not here at the top? No? Do you know why accounts receivable is not here at the top and cash is not here at the second row? Because accounts receivable is more, it's more of a liquid asset than cash. No, cash is more liquid than accounts receivable. That's what you mean? Right. I'm sorry. Yes. So if cash is more liquid, it goes at the top. If accounts receivable obviously is a little bit less liquid, it goes at the second row. How about land? Why land is not before accounts receivable? Because land is non-current asset. It's a fixed asset. It's hard to liquidate it immediately. So it's a fixed asset goes after not current asset. After current asset, no, we have fixed asset. Make sense? So what's the account number for cash? 101. What's account number, let's say, for accounts receivable? Let's say 110. What is account number for land? 
Anyone? Give me an account number for land. I help you. Starts with one. 150. 150, 160, 180. Why? Because it's it's fixed asset. Put it all the way to the back. You know, leave the front end available for current asset. So land is like 160, 170. Accounts payable. What is the account number for accounts payable? Would accounts payable move over to the twos? Yes. Accounts payable starts with two, All right? Here, let's go to accountant center, chart of account, okay? This is the chart of account. You, when you wanna create a business uh, accounting, uh, do accounting for a business, you have to create the chart of account. So asset starts with one, watch. All of them starts with one. Liability starts with two. So accounts payable, what is the account number for accounts payable? 200 or in a better life, life scenario, 20,000. But for a classroom scenario, 200, three digits is enough. Make sense? So that's why accounts payable is after land because land starts with one, like 160, 170, but accounts payable starts with two, 200 or 201 or 210. So that's after land. Note payable, what's the account, payable, uh, account number for note payable? Note payable most probably is longer term than a year, probably. If that's the case, um, um, then you put it like 270, 260 note payable because it's long-term liability. It's not current liability. Accounts payable is a current liability. What's the account number for capital? Capital stock, let's say, common stock. 300. Starts with? Starts with three. Like three, well, 301, for example. So that's why capital stock is here is not because it's not above note payable. It is below note payable because it starts with three. Revenue starts with what? Anyone? Revenue starts with? Would it move over to four? Four. Revenue starts with four. Here we go. Revenue. Construction income. Starts with four. Revenue starts with four. Yes. And again, all this stuff that I'm right now asking you, and I barely get an answer, those are all in my accounting cycle video. I explained them already. So uh, when I'm asking you something and I don't get an answer, I kind of guess how, if you watch my videos or not. Uh, service revenue starts with four. Advertising expense, I just covered that. Like. 20 minutes ago, uh, expense starts with? Expense starts with? Like depreciation expense, starts with six. Cost of goods sold starts with what? Five, cost of goods sold, five. Cost of goods sold is an expense, but we don't call it expense. We categorize it as a cost of services that we provide. So we call it cost of goods sold, but if you look in the Walmart, Walmart calls it cost of revenue or cost of sales. You see, cost of goods sold, cost of sales, cost of revenue is the cost of the t-shirt that Walmart is selling. So the t-shirt that Walmart is selling is $572. The cost of the t-shirt that Walmart is selling is $429. And if you buy that t-shirt, you provide $143 of gross profit to Walmart. Make sense? Simple language.
so but then what would be an example of an expense that doesn't that isn't a cost of the good example of expense here let's watch it here let's go to six bad debt expense maintenance expense uh automobile expense fuel expense insurance expense rent expense depreciation expense dues and subscriptions expense union dues expense uh insurance expense interest expense uh depend you see all those stuff might can can be count an expense payroll expense postage expense supplies expense professional fees expense printing expense those are expense okay again ask me question please um, so what we do we look at the source document after analyzing it we journalize it after journalizing it we click save that means post it you post it where into the general ledger correct specific t account that you need to post that t account might be any of those right you see all these journal entries will be posted in the t account so what you can do let's say for practice do this journal entry read this issued stock uh, to shareholders for cash don't look at the journal entry put the journal entry in your paper and post it to the T account and then read the next one paid for initial advertising program, do the journal entry on your paper, post it to the T account. And then at the end, look at your answers, compare it to the book. Okay, book says this is the journal entry and book says this is where it goes. Did you do it properly? Is the balance at the end is exactly 26,300 in your T account? Is it the balance 3,200 in the accounts receivable T account? You are just, you know, uh, testing yourself with the material in the book. These materials are not wrong. These are correct. So you do it and then you compare with the provided information in the book and you earn that mastery of the subject that you are trying to learn. Questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, if you go up a little to, to the T accounts, mm -hmm. um, there were some numbers that were red and some that were black. Right on the last page that you were in. Yeah, right. this one thing is black, one thing is red. Uh -huh. So it's just credit and debit. Yes, but, I uh, but just so you know, in general, if something is red that means it is reducing the dollar amount if something is black that means is increasing the dollar amount i don't know if you heard in news or uh, political talks or something or in a governmental budget or something they say we need to get out of red what does it mean out of red that means we are in deficit Okay. Red means negative. We need to get out of red. We need to make our numbers black again. So here, here we go. That's what it means. That means here, this black number is increasing the asset. Yes, exactly. Because anytime you debit an asset, it will increase definitely. And anytime you credit an asset, like accounts receivable, it will decrease definitely. So that's a decrease. That's a increase. Very good question. Okay, how about subsidiary account? You see, subsidiary account is an account that it's a sub account of the main account. So when I say accounts receivable, uh, account number 102, that, that kind of good enough, but you know how many customers I'm gonna have in my business? How do I track every customer, how much they owe me? Let's say they call me right now. Compton calls me right now on the phone says, hey, I'm Compton. Can you tell me how much do I owe you right now? I want to send a check right now to close my account. Oh, perfect. Oh, you owe $6,000 here. Half an hour later, Fisher called me, says, uh, 
can you tell me what's my statement right now? How much do I owe you? My balance? Oh, you owe me 4,000 right there. So I open the sub account for Fisher and I look at Fisher and I can see how much he owes me. Then Sunderman called me and said, uh, do I have any balance with you? I look at here, I said, no, you, your balance is paid up. You have zero balance, perfect. So every account has a sub account. So if you remember, I just created an account called it uh, unearned revenue. And I, I said, is it, is it a sub account of something? And I said, no, it's not, just leave it alone. But if it is a sub account of something, you have to click and choose sub account of what? And if, if something is sub account of something else, then the account number here, let's say is 102000, uh, then the other one, the sub account will be 102001. The next account will be 102002, 102003, make sense? So if you use three digit uh, account number, then you end up by using a decimal just like this. Because three digit, as I said, maybe it's good enough for a classroom, but in a real business, it will not be good enough. So you have to come up with a trick. So you say 102.001. That's why I said for a real business, just create a five, six digit account number. So this is the control account. The control account is the total of all subcomponent account records for an account, which we call it main account or control account. So accounts receivable is the control account or main account, and those accounts are sub accounts. Any question? Okay. Did you learn is always good stuff, make sure before you move on to the next question, did you learn those stuff? And if you do, then you move on to the next question. So here is the journal entry, which I did show you already in a QuickBooks, how to record a journal entry, okay? So, and this is the way your book is showing, but I did it on the QuickBooks, so you're fine. And here are the T accounts that you need to learn. This is the way I show the T account in my paper when I'm showing you something, but a good T account looks like this, okay? Yes, the balance is still 26,300 at the end, but the good T account, this is a smart T account. So always the balance will get updated and it shows at any given moment what the balance is. The total for that T account on the left, mm -hmm. are we to do that as well? Just the way it's shown there? Like, is that something that's important for us to learn? I just noticed that now. Let me go back. Which one? This one? Yes. You see how on the left for the debit, it has a total of 33,800. The right for the credit has 7,500. So then it seems that the 26,300 would be the total from both left and right, correct? Debit and credit? Yes. Yeah. Uh, normally okay. I don't do it because uh, it, it takes more time, consuming time. And I don't like to put too many numbers here because it makes confusing for people to understand or even for me to look at it fast and see what I'm doing. So what I like to do is just draw a line here, just like this, but without this connection, okay? I like to draw a line. And then I uh, use my calculator. I said, okay, 25 plus four plus 4,800 minus two minus five minus 5,000 equals 26,300. And just put the 26,300 on the debit side. I see. So in this case, we're not using the double line since it's the, at the end of everything. Like we're not adding anything else. What do you mean? On one of the problems, I noticed that it had a double line. Oh, so yeah. This one only has yeah. one. Yeah, this one doesn't have. So what I like to do at the end of the year, uh, yeah, when I'm done with my problem, let's say, uh, my final balance is 26,300. So I would, like, I would like to draw, if I do it this way, which 
I don't normally, but if I do it this way, I draw a line, complete line here below 33,000 and 7,500, a solid line. And then I put a dollar sign next to 26,300 with double line, just to show me visually that this is the final balance. Because this T account is very simple, so I need to be a little bit more specific with the double line. So, but here you see, this is a smart T account. So I know this is the final balance, but here I like to put double line dollar sign just to show that, hey, this is my final balance, don't make a mistake. And I don't like to put this 33, 800 and 7,500 in T account because maybe someone make things, oh, this is a journal entry. No, this is not, this is just adding this part. So it might confuse someone that doesn't know exactly what we are doing. So I prefer just draw a solid line in here. Don't put anything in here. Add this, minus this, put 26,300 here, double line, dollar sign, case close. Thank you. Very good. So let's move on. So that was chapter two.